My name is Bill Bailey, and I am an idiophonist. An idiophonist is the scientific word for percussion. I basically play anything from spoons to a bowdrum to a wood shoe, um, you know, a horseshoe. Uh, I play other things, instruments that you don't think are instruments. Well, I've been a drummer all my life. I played drums all the way from fourth grade through all the way through high school, rock drum or rock rock, rock bands um, after you know, after that. And then I, I went to college. I sold all my drums and my equipment, and I was musicless for about four or five years. And then finally, uh, a nice couple moved in Caddy Corner from by, and they were old time musicians. And we became fast friends after the first day, and after that, I kept trying to learn how to play old-time music. And as a drummer, that type of beat wasn't really accepted into that type of music. So for a whole year, to fit in, not to be you know, out on the outside, I tried to learn how to play the mandolin, the guitar, harmonica. I played you know, all sorts of instruments, and I just had that drum genetic in me. And I could not do anything else. If you're right-handed, put up your left hand. Okay, if you're right-handed, put up your left hand. Bring that left hand down. One, two, three, Well, after I learned how to play the spoons, then I started playing the triangle, the washboard, uh, the wood shoe, the triangle, and other or, or horseshoes, and other things like that, that folks don't think about playing as an instrument. And from there, uh, just because of my skills, my rhythm that I had in my heart, um, I became a little bit better known. Uh, folks wanted to learn how to play the spoons, learn how to play the washboard, because nobody else around knows how to do that. And so that fortunately has got me back in the music and has kept me in the music since 1976. Um, you know, I learned how to play spoons, then, you know, then the, uh, the triangle. Uh, then as we started playing all different types of music, old blues music, uh, even old time music, jug music, uh, I picked up an old washboard and put a few things on it and started playing it uh, as my drum set. And you know, my first washboard lasted about 10 years. My second washboard lasted about 10 years. And now I'm on my third washboard, which uh, I will probably, hopefully, be playing this as I die. I also have a really nice connection through the washboard with Columbus Washboard Company, which is the last washboard company in North America, or almost the Northern Hemisphere. And they're from Logan, Ohio. And I am very fortunate enough that I tied up with those folks, um, small town folks, which is really even better, um, to play at their festivals that they have, Washboard Festival on Father's Day weekend every year. Plus, I also have a, a business connection where I actually build and sell musical washboards. And with that connection, I buy my washboards from Columbus. I bring them home, I doctor them up, I stain them, I paint them, I put all types of little things on them. And then 80% of my washboards I built, I say, I take back over to Columbus washboard. And they are my, they are my ambassador, I guess I could say, because they sell 80, 85% of the washboards I build. And fortunately with their website, um, they sell the boards all over the globe. You know, there are not very many famous Hoosiers that have played the washboard. We've had a lot of like washboard Sam and, and those folks who've come across the country um, and through Indiana. 
But the most familiar and famous, I think, Washburn player from Indiana played with the Hoosier Hot Shots, and that was Hezzy. And Hezzy also played the slide whistle, and, but he was like the, the fireball of the Hoosier Hot Shots. Um, his board was standalone, and he could stand beside it and play it. Uh, he was a master. He had, he had horns on there that were perfectly pit, in pitch, and he could play right along with the clarinetist on his horns on the washboard. Uh, back in the early 90s, actually mid 80s, then early 90s, I, I had played with a couple bands in, from Indianapolis area, and those two bands started to play at the state fair during the daytime. And there was another band that I played with that we couldn't take off during the daytime, so I actually started asked Jerry Gray, who was the music coordinator at that time, if this band could come in and play on Friday and Saturday nights at State Fair and provide some entertainment for the Pioneer Village. And so once that happened, um, you know, I, I started be playing at State Fair almost all the time with about four or five different bands during the fair. And for some reason, Jerry Gray, who's uh, the, the original music maker at the at Pioneer Village, she saw something in me, I don't know what, uh, but she asked me if I would be interested in taking over the music program at the State Fair, and that's been 13, 14 years ago. Um, now they can't get rid of me. <laughs> I'm there every day. <laughs> About 10 years ago, the State Fair came to the Pioneer Village and said we, want, we would like to have another stage in the Pioneer Village. And we have a small stage that we've been there for 40, year, 40 years, uh, but this stage was much, much larger and they wanted to have more larger programs on that stage. Um, and so one afternoon, once I found out that that was going to be my responsibility, a good friend of mine, Jeff Davis, and I got together and just barnstormed about what can we put on that stage. And it ended up that the most logical thing for the Pioneer Village and for that stage was the WLS National Bond Dance radio show that was broadcast uh, from out of Chicago from the 20s, 1920s, all the way through the early 60s. And so we got a crew together, about 25 folks, and all the music was vintage music, and we put on our first bond dance, and our first two rows of, of, of the audience were saved or reserved for all the older folks uh, that were in their 80s and so forth. And we started doing that first program. We saw tears coming down you know, onto their cheeks. Um, you know, and their comments were, we never thought we would see this again. I never, never expected that this, you know, the music would go so well, the entertainment there. I never, you know, when I took it over, you know, I didn't know what I, you know, I, I'd organized things before, you know, on, on mass scales, but, you know, State Fair, you know, it's, it's special. It's, you know, for the citizens of Indiana, you know, it's home. Yeah, but you know, I was been so yeah, I've been so lucky. <laughs>